That's great. That's good water management. Absolutely. Well, we got we have a couple of good guests on today. Um, uh, one's a gentleman named Mark Naringa. He's the executive director of the Building Industry Association of Southern California. But they're having an event next uh, uh, two weeks from now on on uh, the fifth and the sixth at the Riverside Convention Center. And just to let you know what that's about, uh, 2015 Building Industry Show is the best place for those building and construction industrial industry professionals who are looking to keep up with new products, business practices, and trends in the industry. And the Southern California Trade Show has become the event for local professionals in the building industry to network, promote relationships, and to come share business experiences with a vibrant community of general contractors, builders, and other supporting businesses. So a lot of our listeners who are in those trades, that's a good thing to go to. Those in attendance will have the pleasure of running into their current colleagues, but also the convenience of generating new opportunities and growing their business locally with attendees located right here in, in Riverside. It's really about networking opportunities, Absol- isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. I mean, that really is, you know, relationships in our business, very, very important, and this is where you get a chance to either reconnect or make some new acquaintances. Yeah, absolutely. The show, just so everybody knows, has been going on for 26 years, and it'll make its home at the beautiful Riverside Convention Center near downtown Riverside on November 4th and 5th, and they'll be giving out free passes to and for the building industry professionals who would like to attend. So anybody who's listening who's in those industries and wants to get involved, register online at buildingindustryshow.com and enter the discount code SHOW2015 at checkout. And for anybody listening, uh, for all of those listening, actually, our local call-in numbers are 909-888-5222 and outside our area, 888-909-1050. So we'd like to welcome our first case, Mr. Uh, Mark Naringa. Rob, thank you very much. Mike, thank hey. you too. Um, glad to be with you and uh, you're right, it's the 26th Building Industry Show going on November 4th and 5th at the beautiful Riverside Convention Center. Uh, And as you said, it's the place to be for people in the construction industry, uh, building industry. Uh, We gather together every year, and uh, we'll have about 2,000 attendees, including uh, the leadership and decision makers in, uh, in the largest building companies in Southern California. And uh, they've told us that uh, what they'd like to see is uh, a lot of new trade partner opportunities, uh, subcontractors, uh, people that actually do work. We're, uh, the industry's expanding, and so they're interested in finding new people to do business with. So that's, that's a big focus of the show. Uh, we've got over 90 exhibitors, and they'll be having, uh, they'll be displaying their regular products. In addition, they have some uh, cool new products. We're actually promoting people bringing new products to the show, and uh, we'll have uh, some judging on those products and an award for uh, the cool product. So excellent. Uh, it well, should my- be fun. It should be educational and interesting. And as you said, it's a great networking opportunity to uh, see your old friends and uh, discover new people that you'd like to uh, develop a relationship with. Absolutely. And Mike and I, just for the listeners, are going to be there, and we're going to be uh, speaking with a bunch of new people there who brought some neat, neat products to the industry, and uh, we'll be doing that on uh, on the 4th and part of the 5th. So anybody who's listening who's there, uh, want to come and see us, uh, we'll be, uh, I'm not sure of the booth number, but we'll be there. I think it's 425, but, um, but we'll be interviewing some of the new technologies uh, that are going to be presented there. And you have a, a thing called the Spout, which you may want to talk about. Right. The Spout's an uh, interesting kind of new uh, new thing that we developed this year. Given the focus on the drought and water, uh, the Spout will be a central lo- location on the show floor, and we'll have people speaking about products, technologies, uh, ideas, designs that address water conservation, both indoors and outdoors. We'll have uh, water district representatives. It's it's uh, it's purposely focused on conditions existing today, water conditions, and what can be done about them effectively, both today and into the future as uh, new projects are designed uh, and constructed. 
Well, there's been an article out about home building continues despite the drought, and I think you're in a good position to talk about that. I, I know according to the, the California Building Industry Association, it, it, you know, if they stop doing it, you don't want to pull the plug on $40 billion in economic activity and about 200,000 jobs uh, across California. So how do you see the drought affecting home building? I, I see it affecting home building uh, primarily in the way the new products are designed from exterior landscaping. Uh, if you remember earlier this year when the governor uh, came out with his, his executive order uh, mandating 25% generally uh, reduction in consumption, what he didn't do was try and curtail any industries. And as you said, the building industry in California is is very large, and it's just beginning to to have some vigor again. So the administration didn't want to hamper that or threaten that. So in Southern California, we've had a very good response from our water community, Metropolitan Water District, its uh, member agencies, as well as other districts not part of MET. Uh, those districts have continued to allow and support new development the information that we get is that they understand that new construction new development is an integral part of a healthy economy and and is necessary given our growth uh, all over california so uh, what we've done is uh, you know we're building today the most water efficient homes basically in the world a new home today consumes about 50% less water than a home constructed in 1980. Uh, and that 50% equals about the same amount of water that a new home consumes. So essentially by building a new home and using a new home's uh, plumbing system, you're actually saving enough water so that another new home can be supplied. So uh, that's that's a good thing, and, and that will continue for the life of that home. So those savings are not one time, but they're annually, and they're going to continue for as long as that home is in service. Well, Mike and I a couple of weeks ago attended, uh, went to Las Vegas for the Southern Nevada wait, wait, Water. Wait, you said you weren't going to talk about that. Oh, 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 oh you, mean the, you mean the conference. Okay. The conference. Okay. <laughs> the conference. Okay. Sorry. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. No problem. I'll rewind. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, we we had seen, and, and, and the good thing, I have to say this because it's important, uh, the Toro Company won uh, EPA. Uh, Water uh, Sense, uh, Manufacturing Partner of, of the, the Year. So we were very proud of that. But besides that, we had, uh, there was people there from uh, uh, the uh, fixture uh, device manufacturers for water and such, and and they had spoken about how much water they have reduced in their products to come in. So you think because of all this green building uh, that a lot of builders now are have, as of before, they didn't want to jump into it because they, they thought it added price to the house. But the way I kind of look at it, you know, if you have homes that are energy efficient, you have better windows, you have better air conditioning systems and heaters and, and all these kind of things. And same with you know, smart irrigation equipment, you're actually giving the, the buyer a home that's going to be less expensive to run every single month. Do you, you see a lot of builders picking up on that and using that as a marketing advantage? Yes, they do. Uh, we have one builder that I know of uh, actually puts a, uh, a a notice on on every house that says, using this house and the way it was designed and equipped, you'll save this much money on your operating expenses you know that's water that's electrical etc so so yes it's it's an important part of the marketing and sales of a home and and again today homes are so efficient uh, both from electrical use natural gas and water that uh, it makes a big difference to the homeowner uh, in the amount of money that they end up spending uh, on the operations of the home. So it gives them a little extra disposable or a little bit more money to apply to their mortgage or however they wish to spend that saved money. You know, uh, Rob and I had talked some months before about the fact that, you know, when each of us went with our spouses uh, to look at a home that we were considering to purchase, the focus was, you know, on the 
the countertops and you know the 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 carpeting or the tile appliances. And, uh, you know the appliances you know what things look like and yeah uh, we didn't really think too much about well how much water is consumed over the course of a year at this home inside and outside or how much electricity is uh, consumed and how much will I have to pay uh, for it. And so it's interesting to see uh, maybe the drought has made us all more sensitive to those uh, costs and starting to incorporate those costs into our decision making as opposed to just looking at, you know, what what's uh, what catches our eye. Do you um, do you think that that's going to to be a trend uh, that continues where people are becoming more interested in those operating costs, as you mentioned? I do. I believe they will. Uh, I think it's appropriate. It's, it's uh, you know, it's kind of good physical uh, management. And uh, furthermore, the state of California, through its code, development of codes, new codes, and implementation of new codes, is, is going to require that... Uh, all structures, uh, residential, non-residential, become more and more efficient over the years. And uh, that's one of the things, actually, we're focusing on at the show. We're going to have a uh, conference that deals with uh, net zero energy and water development. So how, how do you wow. get there? How do you get to actually a net zero use in a new structure? So, yes, I believe this is uh, going to be an ongoing trend. Uh, at least certainly for the foreseeable future. And uh, I think it'll benefit the consumer and the home buyer and homeowner. Uh, it'll also benefit people who uh, are living in apartments because apartments are similarly uh, controlled so that new apartments uh, uh, are much, much more efficient in, in all those three areas than apartments uh, that are you, you know, were built in one, two, three, four decades ago. Yeah. So, yes, I know, this is going to be, I think, a continuing trend, both out of uh, the need to conserve and also out of a kind of fiscal responsibility. Yeah. I know a lot of the millennials, for example, they, they're really cautious on how they spend money. I'll give you an example. You know, you see these commercials, and I'm not putting this company down because they, they make great Great automobiles, Mercedes Benz, and they they're marking you know they're marketing it to, to the millennials really strong, and but when you sit down and look at that, some of the millennials say, hey, I, I would really love you know that's when you when you get a Mercedes you 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 feel you arrived. arrived. The problem is, or the issue is, it's one hundred and fifteen dollars for the oil change. <laughs> versus a standard car that you probably get for twenty nine dollars, so that you know the cost of the operation of something like that, and I, and I think they're looking at that in the homes. That's why I think a lot of a lot of home builders who are getting smart and saying, "Hey, look, your mortgage is the biggest nut you got to pay every single month. So how can we give you a wonderful place to live, but a, an efficient home that'll save you money on your operating expenses? Because that's important." Years years ago. You know, probably when you and I bought our homes, I can tell you in Orange County, the term came up, Yorba Linda poor. And a lot of people bought beautiful homes in Yorba Linda, but that's all they can afford. You drive by there a year later, they still don't have window coverings. They still don't have a backyard. And this was what this is what it was back in the late 80s, early 90s. And, you know, yes, you got you got the wonderful, you know, at the time, couple hundred thousand dollar house, but you got nothing else with it because you couldn't afford to do anything with it. Well, if they hung in there, they probably have million-dollar homes. That, that's so. right. <laughs> that's right. So, no. um, What do you think is, uh, is there anything on the horizon that is of most concern to builders in California, uh, whether that be, you know, regulatory issues or uh, financing issues? What, what, what's the big issue that, they, that they're facing? Mike, I think uh, both of those are a high level of concern. We we read constantly that uh, notwithstanding some loosening in the li lending guidelines, slight loosening, and notwithstanding uh, efforts to make mortgages available, uh, the first-time buyer cadre is shrinking almost at, in every reporting period, and much of that has to do with their inability to get financing. So uh, that's an issue. Uh, the regulatory environment is very tough in California, and it's getting tougher. Uh, that's one of the areas that our association is focusing on, uh, both in Southern California and at CBIA, is uh, 
looking at uh, one of our big regulations is CEQA, and when it was passed, the intent was to protect the environment and enhance the environment. But now a uh, study has shown that what's really happening is CEQA is being used to stop projects, and primarily projects that are trying to implement the policy across the state as far as where to locate new development that is in urban areas. Uh, so things like road improvements, schools, uh, urban infill, those are, the th those are the projects that are, for the most part, being uh, hampered or uh, eliminated through CEQA lawsuits. So that's a big issue with us. Um, wow. Well, we really uh, appreciate your uh, insight and also letting us know about how water is affecting the uh, building industry here in California. And, of course, here at Toro, uh, our sponsor, we're doing what we can and focused on getting those uh, irrigation equipment uh, products that, that will reduce that water footprint uh, at home. So uh, come out. We just invite the folks to come on out to the um, – BIA show. Yeah, the, the show. Uh, building industry show, and yeah. I'd just like to say a couple more things about the show, actually. Uh, there's a f events on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, we are going to uh, implement a phone app, too, so uh, people who would like to learn about the show, they can uh, get on our website at Building Industry Show, and uh, if you have an Apple or an Android phone, uh, you can search for Biz Build. Uh, for the phone app, and you can install it. And when you're at the show or uh, when you'd like to know about the show, you can use that app. So uh, that's going to be a fun thing. Great. Uh, well, very good. Well, listen, uh, thank you so much. We're here against a hard break, so we are going to sign off. But uh, thank you again for your uh, your uh, points and your feedback, and we'll hopefully see you at the show. I hope so. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate the opportunity. You're very welcome. You're Good listening. night. Good night. You're listening to The Water Zone on KCAA 1050 AM with Rob and Mike, and we'll be back in just a moment.